part Sean Kelly, interviewing Mike Cheswick, who co-wrote and directed this very cool movie called Hundreds of Beavers. The film is on VOD now, so after checking out this interview, go watch it and see my time take over the world! <laughs> oh, and uh, like and subscribe to see more content like this. Bye! So, uh, how did you get an idea to make what is essentially a live action cartoon. I think it just always liked silent film and slapstick comedy and um, always just thought of it as one of the main genres and uh, always wanted to work in it. And so it, it's just for some reason it hasn't been done for 30 years. But I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's 30, but, you know, it hasn't been done for a while. But I since childhood, this was always the plan to make uh, some slapstick movies. So it's uh, coming at a time when that's unique in the marketplace, I guess. Okay, well, I have to ask this being Canadian. Every time I see like a film with like an old timey style, I think of uh, Guy Madden. So are you influenced at all by his films? <laughs> yeah, I love Guy Madden. I, uh, I, it's definitely like I've seen all his films and I had them on loop during the <laughs> editing of Lake Michigan Monster. <laughs> and the biggest thing that those movies gave us is just permission to work in an archaic style. And that just because a, a style is old, it doesn't mean it has to be abandoned. Mm -hmm. But also Guy Madden's films aren't just imitations of films from the 20s and 30s. They are uh, modern. They're modern films. They, they bring the language forward. So in that way, we're huge Guy Madden uh, acolytes. So well, you mentioned them. How would you say that Hundreds of Beavers differs from Lake Michigan Monster other than you swapping directorial roles of Rob and Brixton coaches? Um, yeah, Hundreds of Beavers, you know, it all takes place in these master shots where things aren't covered from different angles. Um, I guess to some degree, Lake Michigan Monster, you know, is a series of shots that Ryland mm -hmm. planned out. But even more so in Hundreds of Beavers, we're letting the action play in wide shots more often mm -hmm. and um, choreographed wides where the character is small in screen like Buster Keaton mm -hmm. or Mario. So it's sort of a it's a new aesthetic, but using a lot of what we learned on Lake Michigan Monster. Mm -hmm. So I uh, think you, well, you mentioned Mario. Like I, I did notice like that uh, Hundreds of Beavers has kind of like a video game aspect to it. Um, with uh, Jean Kayak getting like points and upgrades based on how many animals he kills. <laughs> totally, yeah. yeah. It has like a Metroidvania structure and it has the Super Mario World uh, map. It ha you know, I love the inventories and, you know, you're not strong enough to go in the castle yet. And the fact that, that you keep track of his inventory is like, I don't know if that's been, I can't think of a movie that has that. I mean, obviously in Scott Pilgrim, it keeps track of how many evil exes he's fought. Can't think of another movie where it like keeps track of what the protagonist has acquired. So I think we'll uh, move on to a bit more of the technical aspects of the film. So there wasn't actually hundreds of beavers. So how many beavers were there? <laughs> there is six, six beavers. And uh, now there's like two and a half left. They've all been destroyed through action and through the live show. Yes. So I heard that one of them was stolen from the Toronto screening. Yes, yes. <laughs> Canadian thieves, <laughs> a nation of thieves, I assume. <laughs> so uh, how difficult was the film to edit? You know, the After Effects stuff was extremely time consuming and, and the hardest part for me. But the editing, you know, because there's no coverage, mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, when you get the shot, you're really just dropping it on top of the sh of the animatic. Mm -hmm. So things, everything's boarded out and then you're just putting the putting the elements just on top of where they go, and you're not actually making a lot of editing decisions, except in the few instances of coverage, like uh, the wolf fight or the shot reverse shots of Rylan and Olivia. But other than that, it's just a matter of picking the in point and the out point and the speed of the shot and then doing the compositing work. But there isn't, you know, coverage. We're just counting on getting the one shot we planned correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the traditional sense of editing, the editing was simple, but the actual post work was extremely complicated. Well, I can only imagine the amount of compositing you did for the uh, Beaver Dam sequence towards the end. <laughs> yeah, that's funny because it's, a lot of just Shutterstock images of logs that I'm then building in like After Effects. And uh, some of the most complicated looking shots toward the end are really cheap because it's just like Shutterstock and like one beaver on one green tarp. Other things in the snow were more complicated, but nothing was especially expensive. But um, yeah, the hardest compositing shots were in the lodge, especially when 
John Kayak goes off a ski jump and he lands on water that's iced over. Do you remember that shot? I haven't seen it since Fantasia, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. There, some of these shots, they were just open on my computer for like two weeks, just me working on one shot. I mean, other shots took an hour, but that was just a puzzle for a chunk of my life. Did you always ex- intend for like Hundreds of beavers have like a very interactive theatrical experience of like Ryan running up on stage and like fighting the beaver. And it developed during the festival run. Yeah. We just started doing that at fe- at fests to make it entertaining and make it more of a party. And then uh, yeah, that just kind of turned into the show <laughs> that we toured through the Midwest and then did some LA and New York screenings. We wound up doing the show twenty six times commercially, but you know we. We'd been screwing around at festivals for, I don't know, 60 fests or something. I mean, we we just keep fighting beavers in theaters. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a very entertaining screen. It was, like my, it was actually my final Fantasia screen before I took the train back to Toronto. So, <laughs> Oh, great. Yeah. yeah, that was a good one. I think uh, that Your Movie Sucks guy was at that screening. Uh, what is uh, next for you? We're going to take the style forward. We're going to add a little more. We had a lot of fun doing the fight sequence in Beavers, so we're going to be doing a lot more of that with our fight choreographer, uh, John Trey. He's really talented, and he really made that, he designed that fight and really made it his own. I tried to, you know, keep the 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 state, the kind of the, the, the blocking somewhat in the style of the rest of the movie, but that fight is really John's baby. Mm-hmm. And so I'm excited to work more with John to do more combat, not just slapstick, but bring a little more Hong Kong into the style mm-hmm. we're establishing. Yeah, actually, I, I heard, I was actually talking to King to Peter Plus yesterday. He was talking about how you were like playing a martial arts film or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love Hong Kong, love uh, 80s martial arts especially. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm a huge admirer of that whole other wing of physical comedy. And uh, I think with Beavers, you know, we've clearly made a very American film and uh, hoping to bring in a little more Hong Kong influence. Are you happy with the um, success that hundreds of Beavers had? Yeah, it's been uh, very grateful for how much people appreciate it. And Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know, this is not usual for an indie film. So Mm -hmm. we're extremely grateful. And uh, everyone's been really nice. And even the people that don't love it are like so respectful and polite about it. So yeah, I don't know. It's been great. Uh, But I, I am excited to get back to work because it's, you know, been a year and a half of uh, releasing the movie and talking about mm-hmm. it. And, uh, you know, eventually you just it's fun to have a little a mission in life and, uh, it, you know, a goal. And then uh, it's time to dig into the next project more soon. So, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I'm excited to get back to work, actually. So Hundreds of Beavers is going is on streaming now. So, um, do you plan like a Blu-ray release? Yeah, I love Blu-rays and I want to do a really nice Blu-ray release for this movie. Actually, I have my Lake Michigan monster one here. Oh, very nice. Uh, the Zoom is kind of like erasing it. <laughs> this is like, this is one of my favorite releases ever was the Criterion Med 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 World, which is our posters based on this. I don't know why I pulled this out, just because I'm just saying, look at how many special features are there are. Look how good a Blu-ray release can be. Mm-hmm. It's like the, this is like, this one is like the gold standard. This and the, and the Lord of the Rings box set, of course, but we won't even... Touch. We won't get anywhere near the quality of that. Okay, so uh, thanks for talking about the film. Yeah, thanks, Sean. We'll see you Sean I really one. appreciate all your kind words over the years. It's been, it's been so sweet. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Yeah, thank you. Uh, saw both your films at Fantasia, even though I live in Toronto. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, <laughs> love love Toronto. Love Montreal and Fantasia. Can't wait to get back soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we've just been doing so many fests. I'll probably take a a break from fests mm-hmm. for a little bit, but. Yeah, once we're digging into the next movie, I can't wait to get back. Well, thank you, Sean. Okay.